Photographing waterfalls, for me, is all about shutter speeds. And you have a few options to consider depending on what you're trying to achieve with the photo that you're creating. As I discover compositions, I'm gonna be talking you through my thought process and sharing a little technique that I like to use with shutter speeds to get a particular result. The problem with making these videos, showing you locations and talking about techniques and sharing ideas is I need to create photos to illustrate my points. And very often the conditions aren't that favorable when I'm out and about. So I've decided for all my videos, starting with this one, I'm gonna rate my photos that I show you out of 10. This will help you understand that I'm showing something as an example of a technique or location rather than an example of a great photograph. Rating our photos is actually a good idea anyway. I think we should all do it. Looking through thousands of photographs of waterfalls on the internet, I've noticed the most common approach is to use very long exposures and blow everything out, create water that's sort of dreamlike and create an ethereal fine art looking image. And that's great. It's not my thing though. I prefer to show some movement and some texture in, in water. Typically I'm shooting between one tenth and one thirtieth of a second but of course it depends on the speed of the water. The photo I've just shown you was shot at one tenth of a second and for me it's it's just right that water is just right. Oh for this shoot today I'm using an old 20 millimeter prime from the early 90s. It's a fantastic little lens and you can pick them up for next to nothing at the moment. I'm also switching between a circular polarizer and a three to six stop VND filter depending on how bright the light is. I like to ask myself, what am I actually photographing here? What am I showing beyond a pretty picture of water? Is the focus on the rocks, the water itself, the, the entire scene, the, the waterfall, the rapids within its environment? What am I trying to communicate? There's nothing wrong with creating a pretty picture like the one you've just seen, but can I go deeper? To find the answer, we need to take our time to really look around. So the thinking with this composition, the water at the top of the scene is fast moving. There's a lot of energy there, but at the bottom of the, the composition, it calms down. In fact, it's a, a calm pool that gently swirls around and 
to me, there's a little bit of a story there. I like that juxtaposition of energy and calmness. So I want to capture that. The first shot captures the water as it races down. And to do that, I'm cranking up my ISO to 500 to get a faster shutter speed. But we're not seeing the swirling water in the foreground here. So to show the swirling, I need to set my ISO to 64 to get a two second exposure. And all I'm doing is blending those two frames together in Photoshop to show the little story that's going on. I kind of like that. It works. Not the best composition though, but gets the idea across. This kind of photography, a good tripod is essential. And today I've been trying out a travel tripod from KNF Concept. It's carbon fiber and quite light. Weighs in at about 2.9 pounds with the ball head. And uh, height wise comes in at about 62 inches. I don't like doing reviews, so I'm not gonna do one, but I needed a new tripod. So my idea is to test this long term. I'm going to take this with me from now on, on all my trips, in all my videos, and we'll see how it performs. So far, so good. It's a good size, seems to be very well made, and looks nice. I like the compact size, it comes with a little carry case if that's something that you need. And it's very reasonably priced. Very, very good price, actually. So, a real world test. I'm going to put it through its paces. I think this is far more relevant for somebody that travels with these things rather than just taking it out into the garden and reading a spec sheet. If I was going to do that, I may as well try and sell you double glazing at the same time. I mean, this is similar to the previous scene a juxtaposition of energy and calmness. For everything that I shoot in these sort of conditions, I just leave it on f11. Um, for the foreground shots, the long exposures, I'm focusing in the foreground. And for the faster shots, I'm focusing about halfway into the frame. Now, focus obviously depends on the type of lens you've got. Because I'm using a 20 millimeter, I've got a ton of depth of field to play with. I'm using ISO in conjunction with filters to get my desired shutter speed for my, my two exposures for my little two frame sequence. Now my camera goes to 64 ISO, which is very convenient to get a long exposure. And I'm cranking it up to 500 ISO for the faster exposures. A lot of landscape photographers have been making videos about ISO recently. But what's interesting is nobody's talked about the fact that a lot of modern cameras are optimized for two ISO settings. They have dual gain sensors. So for the Nikon Z9 and Z8, 64 ISO is the optimal ISO setting and then 500. So for me today, what that means is that if I'm raising my ISO from 64 to say 320 or 400 ISO, it actually makes sense for me to jump to 500 ISO because there's less noise at 500 ISO than there is at 320 ISO. Go figure, I don't know the science behind it and I don't care to. All I know is it's worth knowing. When you're talking about low ISO like that, you have to pixel peep to probably tell the difference. But yeah, I think it's worth just reading up on that and find out what your camera is optimized for if it is a dual gain sensor. For the Z9 and Z8 for video, those two settings are 800 ISO and 4000 ISO. And for video, those settings are more important than, than the photography settings. 
now we're approaching midday and the sun is out so the conditions are horrendously bright and it's time for the three to six stop VND to try and cut some of that light if I want to get some long exposures. I found another section of the river with quite an aggressive little waterfall. Now there's not a, a swirling pool in the foreground but there is a calm area and there's lots of bubbles in it and I don't like those bubbles so I'm gonna do my little two frame sequence again just blur out those bubbles so I think I had to crank the the neutral density filter to five stops for this one and get about one and a half seconds exposure and I think it worked Well, this was a fun day and I'm going to share my favorites with you in a second. But do let me know in the comments, is this little two sequence idea that I'm sharing of any use? Do you think I'm nuts? I mean, I like to experiment and I, I discovered this and I like to use it a lot. Works for me, might not work for you. Do you prefer shooting long exposures for your waterfalls and getting that, that really blown out ethereal look? Or do you shoot fast and capture all the texture, all the drops of water? let me know in the comments and please give me a thumbs up. I don't usually say that, but apparently it helps the algorithm share this video with other people. And hey, this little channel needs all the help it can get. Thanks for watching.